Hello, necro cannibals and unwashed stuffed animals, and welcome to what is sure to be the most brain dead, stupid installment of corrupted cover art thus far. And that's really saying something. The drums have been pre programmed, the horror VHS tapes have been rewound, and we're ready to analyze the cover art of the brutal death metal maniacs known as Mortician. Mortician is one of the finest examples of New York death metal, and it is such a pleasure for me to be able to honor the band that had such an influence on death metal, and grindcore, and death grind, and extreme flavors of all sorts. Mortician has quite a doozy of a discography, so let's hop right into it with their demo, Brutally Mutilated. Obviously, the title suggests that somebody has been brutally mutilated. Hmm? But who? There's two men dripping with blood, obviously having been severely injured and likely mutilated to some degree, but who exactly are we talking about here? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to come up with a metric by which we can quantify brutality. And I'll be the first to admit that we can't, so let's analyze abstractly. The most prominent figure on the cover of the demo has likely seen better days, what with his viscera dripping out and all, but he's gonna get some serious points off for being the only one standing on the demo cover. How brutal could the attack have been if he's still standing tall and proud with his collar popped, his shoes neatly tied, and his pants fitted with an expertise that would draw more than a few eyes on the runway? He has the advantage of the irreversibly splayed ribcage, I guess, but I'm not terribly impressed. Now. Cut to our other specimen here, who's lying on the cold, hard floor, and he does not seem to be enjoying his time down there. It's hard to measure the damage he's taken when we can't see his entire body, but whatever happened to him is making him squeeze juice out of a syringe. I don't see Mr. Hotshot Exposed Organs squeezing a goddamn thing. So I'd say we have a clear winner as to who is really the victim of a brutal mutilation here. Better luck next time, pal. Let's keep on moving down the road, but not without paying a visit to the house by the cemetery. A short but sweet EP with one of the bounciest outros you can find in Brutal Death Metal. For such a short release and such an earlier portion of the band's discography, I would rank this EP decently high overall. It's got some of their coolest riffs and some of their most memorable horror movie samples. And at the end of the day, it's Mortician. Literally, what else could you possibly ask for in the music? As for the cover, well... I think we would have a new winner if we were still accepting participants in that brutally mutilated contest. Beyond that, there's a pile of skulls and bones, some of which have meat, some of which do not, but they're all positioned neatly in front of this house by the graveyard? This is a family's house by the looks of it, which means that there are no religious limits on how you can honor the recently deceased. And clearly, this family is not letting the opportunity for creativity go to waste. Atop this pile of skulls is the severed head of one Joseph Gilgrabber the notorious shark fetishist who used to work at the local hardware store. Once he got a drink or two in him, there was no possible way to get him to shut up about how fascinating and strangely attractive he found hammerhead sharks. Although he never realized his dream of abandoning his wife and getting illegally hitched to a sea creature, the family in charge of the cemetery was kind enough to honor his passion in death by removing his eyeballs and spreading them apart like those ocean-dwelling cuties he loved so very, very much. But now, I'd say it's high time for us to break out of a window in hell and babble a mad tale as our brother and friends get hacked up for barbecue. Confusingly enough, that sample from the largely underrated Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 does not appear on the album directly inspired by it, but rather on the 1999 full-length Chainsaw Dismemberment. Both albums draw heavy influence from the Texas Chainsaw franchise, so it isn't a big deal. Just take your pick when you're in the mood for head cheese or licking Chop Top's plate, you bitch! But let's not gloss over the barbecue that quickly. Any dedicated carpenters in the audience will be able to recognize instantly that, despite being made of human bones, this is a chair. Pretty unusual that the band would feature a chair on an album about a barbecue, though. Those are generally pretty active social gatherings that see peers walking around the yard and standing by the grill and generally just not sitting down. So, who is the lazy little chucklehead that felt the need to fashion a chair out of human remains? Well, slow down there, hotshot. Things aren't always what they seem at first. Notice the foot still attached to the leg of the chair. Perhaps some quirky little visual humor, or, more likely, an indication that this chair used to be a living, breathing creature, one that is still in the process of being hacked up for barbecue. The cover also depicts a pig lying on the floor with its throat slashed, 
but that's nothing unusual for meat-related celebrations. There's also a couple of rotting human cadavers strung up on meat hooks to the side of the cover, but once again, every outdoor hangout has that couple of goofballs that drink too much and begin rapidly decomposing. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. But Mortician would never roll the dice on a boring or unimaginative piece of artwork, which is why I am confident in saying that these death grind daddy o's not only genetically engineered a chair with human meat and bones, but then proceeded to violently deflesh it for some macabre consumption. I hope you're still hungry, because boy, do we have a feast of flesh coming up for you folks. Behold, Zombie Apocalypse, Mortician's 1998 EP with one of their most straightforward examples of visual storytelling. Clearly, the woman in the dead center here has had an unfortunately close encounter with the walking dead, and her friends are rushing to help her out in any way that they can. This brave soul right here is attempting to suck the zombie juice out of the poor woman's bite mark in hopes of removing it from her system before it can trigger a morbid metamorphosis. Meanwhile, this crafty medic is preparing to stitch up her wound after the juice has been removed. They're in the middle of the woods, and surgical thread would be too difficult to track down in time, so this man bit the bullet and decided to use the woman's own gore-soaked entrails to lace up her wound. Talk about ingenuity. But at long last, we arrive at the aforementioned Chainsaw Dismemberment, graced with their most evocative cover and some of their best recordings. The first thing that jumps out to me is this barrel of bones. I would have said the freshly mutilated woman at the forefront, but it's kind of hard to jump out when you've only got one leg. The barrel, however, bears a striking resemblance to the barrel on the Hacked Up for Barbecue cover art. That's all the evidence I need to assume that these two covers take place at the same farmhouse. I'm not sure what it is about these people and feeling the need to sit down at a goddamn barbecue, but clearly they're pretty stubborn when it comes to breaking social etiquette. Just take a look at freshly mutilated Miranda over here, the narcissistic drama queen who needed a rest so badly that she had her own leg removed just to justify her weak will. As if that wasn't shameful enough, she apparently hasn't heard of a plate either. Look at this mess. No wonder everyone around her has such an animated expression of disgust on their face. And now, for something more human, more emotional. When the time comes for our hearts to stop and our gore to slop, our spirits are transported to the sprawling domain of death. As the name implies, this realm is largely reserved for the dead, but on occasion, a living person is given a glimpse across the bridge between worlds. Wink, wink. Our clairvoyant heroine here has tapped into the depths of her mind to see what kind of fate befell her best friend, Sewer Sloshing Samuel. His death was sudden and violent, and his bereaved buddy couldn't go on without closure of some kind, without knowing that this rat was in a better place. Alas! Much to her surprise, Samuel was damned to an eternity among the blazing furnaces of hell. His eternal payment for that time he embezzled millions of dollars from Greta Thunberg's climate change fundraisers and used them to finance his virtual reality breastfeeding startup company in Silicon Valley. The shock and betrayal that this sorry soul felt upon learning of her friend's fate immediately caused her to weep magnificent streams of blood down her woe-stricken face. Hell is also very hot, so her eyes may be melting a bit. I can only imagine how she felt, but that's the way life goes. You never know when, or quite exactly why it's happening, but we'll all eventually have our own darkest day of horror. If you couldn't tell, that was a ham-fisted segue into the next mortician full length, Darkest Day of Horror. This certainly isn't the band's most memorable release, but if you enjoy Mortician, they apply a very simple and predictable formula to their music, and you'll likely get some enjoyment out of this one. The cover, on the other hand, is a crucial follow-up to the narrative that began on Zombie Apocalypse. It seems that sweet young ratless woman won't be the only one crying tears of blood today as the losses keep piling up. One of the survivors on the zombie apocalypse cover whistled for additional help, but it seems they arrived a little too late. Even with the best doctors in the city, the bodies kept stacking, and the mental strain took its toll on a large chunk of the population. There were the blood tears, of course, it's not really an emotional breakdown without them, but apparently there's a culture in this city of stripping your shirt off and chewing your own chest open whenever you fall on hard times. That's probably not the safest coping mechanism, but I think it's clear that these people need some space right now. Let's leave them be and take a brief detour to final bloodbath sessions. 
Interestingly enough, this is maybe the band's best release from a technical standpoint, and it's fitted with their worst cover. But, since every song on here is technically a re-recorded version that implements actual drumming, I don't count this as a totally kosher full length, and don't feel obligated to analyze it. It's not like there's much to work with here anyway, unlike the action-packed, reanimated dead flesh. Holy mother of computer-generated imagery, this is, uh... This is really something, isn't it? I might as well take this opportunity to give a heartfelt R.I.P. to the late Stuart Gordon, as this cover is very clearly a reference to his underground horror classic, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mortician is world-renowned for their brain-dead dumb-dumb death metal, flirting with the absolute edge of DUMMY MODE. If ever there was a release of theirs that crossed that line, it would probably be this one, but it's still Mortician at its core, you know what to expect. The cover should be pretty easy to read if you're already familiar with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lore. It's a blatant depiction of that time that Master Splinter attempted to rekindle the magic inside of the ooze that made his disciples turn into giant muscular turtles. But this time, he's attempting to genetically modify April O'Neil's womb so that she can bear muscular turtle children in the future and keep the franchise from falling into obscurity. Kind of a weird choice for a death metal record, but hey, they're not the only death metal band with turtles on the mind. But enough about these wild turtle characters, folks. We've just concluded the main mortician discography, you and I. The band is still active today, touring whenever they can and peddling some... creative merchandise, so who knows, maybe we'll get a new release sometime soon. Do we need one? Do we want one? If you're asking these kinds of questions, then I think you missed the point. Mortician does whatever the hell they want, whenever the hell they want. And so do I. Which is why I'm off to a macabre farmhouse in South Texas to become mauled beyond recognition. Wish me luck.